Okay, you all, I'm back. Um, so I had to split this up into another part. So we left off on verse. We left off on verse 20. Verse 20 where it says, at the end of verse 20 where it says, the time was come. The time was come about Hannah had conceived that she bur she bore. She bared a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. And so now we add verse 21. And this is in verse 21 where Hannah's fulfillment, where Hannah's fulfilled her promise to God. So in verse 21, and the men Echaniah and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vows. Verse 22, but Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weed, and then I will bring him. And then I will bring him that he may appear before the Lord and there abide forever. Verse 23, and Elkaniah, her husband, said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good. Tarry, tarry until. So he's saying, Wait until thou have weed him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weed him. So suck is like she, like basically like she, um, like was, I guess, uh, breastfeeding him. She breast, uh, was breastfeeding, um, was breastfeeding Samuel. And so she didn't want to give him to the priest until, you know, she weed him until she took him off, you know, the breast milk, you know, so like he, he, uh, until he grew, you know. And so now, it says, let's go to 24. And when she had weed him, she took him with her with three bullocks and one epin, one epin of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shilon. And the child was young. The child was young, verse 25. And they slew him. They slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli, verse 26. And she said, O oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman. I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord for this child, I pray. And the Lord has given me my petition, which I ask of him. Verse 28. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he lived. He shall be lent to the Lord, and he worshiped the Lord. He worshiped the Lord there. And so... As I'm reading this, it's, uh, this is coming to the end of the verse. Um, I don't know how many or what person. Like Hannah, like she was so, um, like so faithful, so dedicated. Her prayer, she, you know, she stayed, um, she stayed consistent with her prayer, and she kept her promise to God. Like after she had the, after she had Samuel, she, um, she nursed him. She nursed him all the way up until he was like, and it's, it's going to say it when we get to um, when I uh, when I read what the uh, the verse is talking. It's going to say that until he was three years old, and then she took him to the priest, and when she took him, then she took an offering. They took an offering. The offering she took with him, and so let's read what verse twenty four and twenty five is talking about. At each of the great annual feasts, several different types of sacrifice was offered to God. Some offerings required animal sacrifices for the forgiveness of sin. Some required food or gain offering for praise and thanksgiving. And some required a liquor, a liquid. So when it said a liquid, I'm thinking that's why she took the wine. She took the wine because the liquid, the liquid offering is represent um, dedication. So she took the liquid to be poured out at the base of the altar for dedication. Elkanite and Hannah took three bullocks, or, or according to some sources, a three-year-old bull, some flour and some wine, some flour and some wine to the annual feast in order to offer several types of sacrifices, including one to dedicate their child Samuel to God. You can read more about this in Numbers 15, 1 and 10. For um for more on the different types of offering. And so now we're going to read verse 26 to verse 26 and 28 where we read 
And she said, Oh, my Lord, at the soul live it, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. For this child I pray, and the Lord has given me my petition when I ask of him. 28. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he lived, and he shall be lent to the Lord and in worship the Lord there. And so let's read, let, I want, let's read what that verse is talking about. To follow through on her promise, um, Hannah gave up what she wanted most, her son, and presented him to Eli to serve God in the tabernacle. And dedicating her only son to God, Hannah was dedicating her entire life and future to God. Since Samuel's wife, since Samuel, since Samuel's life was from God, Hannah was not really giving him up. Rather, she was returning him to God who had given who had given him to Hannah in the first place. These verses show us the nature of the gift we are to give God. So she gave God her one of her most precious. Hannah gave God one of her most precious, one of her most precious gift. This is, can you imagine? She never had a child. She never had a child. Her womb was shut for years and years. Then she prayed and asked God for sure. And she said, when you give, praying, Lord, you give me a child, I'm going to give him back to you. So she kept her promise. So can you imagine? I'm just paraphrasing. You never had a child before. Then you get a child. And you give your child, give, you dedicate him back to God. You dedicate him back to God. So many of us, we pray and we say, Lord, um, this is my child. I'm putting him in your hands. She, Hannah, physically, she physically put him. You know, she took him to the priest. Like, was putting him in God's hand. She didn't just, you know, like she like said a prayer. Lord, I'm putting him in your hand. Praying that you watch over him. You cover him. She took him. After she nursed him all the way up until he was three, she took him and then she did it. You know, she kept her promise. She took him to God. She took him to the priest for him, you know, to be there to serve. And so then it goes to say she was returning. She was returning him to God who had given him to Hannah in the first place. These verses show us the nature of the gifts we are to give to God. Are they gifts which cost us little? Sunday morning, a comfortable tie, or are they gifts of sacrifice? So Hannah, she wasn't giving like, you know, something we got. She gave him a child. She gave him her child, you know. And then it goes to say, we're going to read it. Like, when she gave him a child, she didn't just give him. She just, you know, she went there. She went there. Like, a yearly, she would go there and um, take things, uh, take sacrifice, take things to him, you know. You know, like a mother, he just paraphrased, she gave him to the priest and she went to you know, go check on him, go see about him. You know, you know, she didn't just drop him off, drop him off, like never went to go see him. She still yearly, she went to go see him. And so, are you presenting God with tokens or are you presenting him with your entire life? Verse 28, Samuel was probably, and this is where it tells his age when she gave him to the priest. Samuel was probably three years old, the customary age for weeding. When his mother left him at the tabernacle, she did not, she did not, of course, forget how much wanted her wanted son. She visited him regularly, and each year she brought him a linen robe. So she took things to him. You know, she like took clothing. She took clothing to him. She took clothing to him. She visited him regularly each year. She brought him a linen robe, just like Eli's. You can read more about this in chapter 2, verse 19. In the later years, Samuel lived in Ramah, in his parents' hometown. And um, I think that's the end. That's the end of y'all. So that's the end of the, of the lesson, the verse. And so, um, wow, y'all. So as I was reading this, like I was reading so many things. Uh, as I was reading, and I do want to add, like we just read this kind of prayer. But in chapter two, it talks about Hannah give uh, Hannah prayer of thanks. How she gave prayer of thanks to God. So if you get a chance, you can go and read chapter two. But we just finished chapter one, and so um, as I was reading this, um, as I was reading this, so many things coming to my mind, and what God was giving me when I was studying this last night, the notes that um, the notes what He gave me to give you all on today. Like, man, this is so powerful. Um, there's so many of us just like Hannah. So many of us just like Hannah. 
Um, we've been we've been praying, we've been crying and asking God. There's some praying and asking God, Lord, Lord, do this, Lord. What if it was a healing? Is a breakthrough, financial blessing? It might be even marriage. It might be a house. It might be a car. It might be a job. Um, whatever it is, you've been you've been crying. You've been crying and you've been crying for so long, praying and asking God, Lord, can you, Lord, I'm asking you for you praying, 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 praying. And me, from my experience, that's how I was like Hannah. That's how I was like Hannah before I moved. Like I kept it up before God. This was eight years. Eight years. Like I was just praying, praying and praying and asking God, Lord, please bless me with a place. Lord, please bless me with a place. But eight is eight. This went on for eight years. Eight years, y'all. Eight years. And so just praying, weeping, praying. So y'all hear this because I want to bless you. I want to bless you all on today. I want you to be encouraged on today. However the case may be, yours may be two years, three years, four, five. It may be even longer than mine. However it may be, you might have been just like Hannah. You might have been just like Hannah where your womb is shut up. You want a child. You want to bear a child. You can have a child. I want to encourage you on today just like Hannah. Hannah cried. Hannah cried out to God. And God turned Hannah's tears into an answered prayer. So on today, I want you to be encouraged on today that whatever it is that you may be going through, that you may be, God wants you to be encouraged and to want you to know that he's getting ready. He's getting ready to turn. He's getting ready to turn your tears into a answered prayer. God is getting ready to turn your tears into a answered prayer. You might have just cried your last uh, your last tears once a day. You might have cried your last tears on yesterday. God is getting ready to give you an answer prayer because you've been just like Hannah. You've been faithfully, you've been faithfully going to Him, giving Him your petition. Just like me, I was faithfully for eight years praying to God, asking God, Lord bless me with place, Lord bless me with place. February of 2024 of this year. This year was my last prayer. Like God said, he spoke a word. And I shared it so many times in my video. And I'm going to share it, say it again. He gave me, because I just kept, you know, I just felt like, like, kind of like Hannah. Like, okay, like, is it going to happen? Lord, are you hearing me? And so it wasn't until he spoke this word and then I held on to it. Because when he spoke it, it's like I felt something. It was like a promise is a promise. A promise is a promise. I told you I'm going to do something. I'm going to do it. I cannot go back on my word. I cannot go back on my word. Like the scripture says, um, the scripture says it's in, um, in Numbers 23 and 19. And it said, God is not a man that he should not lie or the son of man that he should change his mind. If he, and I just want you to be encouraged on today. If God told you something, if he spoke something to you, just trust him at his word. Trust the process. Believe him as we believe that he's going to do. He spoke. He said, I'm going to do it. He told you I'm going to do it. He is going to do it. Look at me. I'm telling you, I am a living testimony, you know, from experience. So many things that God told me and it came to pass. And then there's still something else that I'm praying. And I'm asking God, I'm asking God, praying, asking God about it. And I believe he's going to do it. And, um... Um, I want to share something with you, share something with you all. I was praying to ask a guy about something. And so, um, one of, there's this pastor, he's kind of, uh, this pastor, he's like a friend of my, um, he was a friend of, uh, like my, you know, my family, friend of my family. And I always, like, I go to like, he have a prayer clinic. He had the prayer clinic. And I might've shared one testimony a couple weeks ago about how he told me I was going to be traveling. Well, back in 2023, back in 2023, when I went to his, uh, it's called the prayer clinic, intercessor prayer clinic. And so, um, he's a pastor, um, prophet of God. And he prophesied to me and he told me, I didn't tell this man anything. I didn't tell him anything, but I knew God had spoken it to him and God spoken it to him to confirm to me. Like he said, I hear you, Melissa. I hear you. So he told me, he said, um, Sister Melissa, the Lord, you know, the Lord has shown me that you have came to him. You came to him 
you have came to him and asked him about something and you said, can't nobody do this but God. Can't nobody do this but God. And he said, God is showing me. He said, God is showing me that your posture, your position is like this. He said, it's like this. You're ready. You're in a receiving position. You're in a position where you're you're ready to receive. You're acting, you're asking him, you don't went to him. Now you ready to receive. And when he said that, I was like, Can nobody told you that but God? Because that was me. That was me. That's exactly what I said. I went to God and I told him, God, can't nobody do this with you. If you bring this to pass, if you bring this to pass, Lord, can, it won't be nobody but you. I know it was you that did this. And when he said that, it was confirmation letting me know that God said, I hear you. I hear you, Melissa. I hear you. I heard that prayer that you prayed. I hear you. So I just want to encourage you, beautiful, lovely people on today that God hears you. He hears you. He heard you. He heard you when you was crying. He heard you when you was crying in, in your prayer closet. He heard you when you was crying at work. He heard you when you was crying in your car. He heard you when you was crying. He heard your prayer. He heard your every prayer. He heard what you cried out. You just cried out just like Hannah. Just like Hannah. And I just want you to be encouraged on today to say, God is getting ready. Listen to me. God is getting ready. To turn your God is ready to turn your tears into a answered prayer. He's getting ready to turn your tears into a answered prayer. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. He heard you. He's getting ready to turn your tears into a answered prayer. So right now, what you just need to do is just rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice and thank him and praise him in advance. Praise him as if like it's already done. Get prepared. Get prepared, whatever it is that it may be. Like me, and he spoke that a promise is a promise. I had already, like me, my daughter, we had already had our stuff packed up. Our stuff was already, it was just packed up. Oh, we was waiting on provision. We just waiting on the place. God, okay, where are we going? And he was like, a promise is a promise. February 2024, he did it. This place I'm in right now, you know, God... God answered my prayer. He answered my prayer. Um, 2020, February 2024 of this year, God turned my tears into a answered prayer. So I just want you to be encouraged and to know that God is going to um, turn your tears into a answered prayer. Whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever the case may be, you might be going through. It might be your healing. You might need a healing. You might need a healing. Start speaking healing. Start speaking healing over your life and your love. Was you want a financial blessing? Uh, speak. Uh, start speaking um, the scripture Philippians four and nineteen, where it said, "My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory." Whatever the case may be, whatever situation, get you a scripture. Get a scripture to go with whatever that is. That thing that you ask God, you praying for about. Get you a scripture. Get your scripture and you just speak it over. Just speak it over. Just speak it over it. Say, Lord, you said this is your word. This is your word. You said, ask. You said, I ask. You said, ask and it shall be given. Speak it over your life. And so, um, let me see if I'm getting anything. And so, like I said, and when I was getting ready to put this um, lesson, I was studying my Sunday school lesson. When I first got this, I was studying my Sunday school lesson. And um, he spoke it in my spirit. Melissa, I need you to have some crazy faith. I need you to have some crazy faith. It's where it's that, you know, so crazy. You're asking God for something. You ask God for something. Let's say you ask asking God for a house. Lord, um, look, um Bless me what I'm looking to have on my own house. Crazy faith? When you have some crazy faith, crazy faith is when you're going out looking at a house. That's some crazy faith. Crazy faith when you're going out looking at a house. That's crazy faith. Or when you want to buy a, you, you want a car. Crazy faith, you're going out looking at cars. Crazy faith, you're going out looking at houses. you going out and you are looking at houses. That's crazy faith. You said you desire a spouse, a spouse. Crazy faith is you going looking at wedding dresses. You looking at wedding dresses. You looking at weddings. You looking at different things. You know, wedding planning. That's some crazy faith. 
That's some crazy faith. And so when he spoke that into me, like, Melissa, I need you to have some crazy faith. You praying and you asking me for this. But that very thing that you asked me for, I need you to have some crazy faith. And I need you to go out, whatever, start to get stuff. Don't look at that stuff. Look at that stuff. Go look at stuff. Have some crazy, bold, crazy faith. I want to share this testimony with you. Um, this, um, my late pastor, the one that, um, I'm going to do the Principles of Prayer series on um, this book. She was sharing this testimony about this um, this woman. She wanted to be married. She wanted to be married. And so she said the woman got some crazy faith. She got some crazy faith. And she said she went out and got her, bought her wedding dress. She went out and bought her wedding dress. A couple of weeks, and, uh, I believe it was some weeks or some later, she got married. She got married. So that's some crazy faith right there. And so when he spoke to them, my spirit, he said, Melissa, I need you to have some crazy faith. You know, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I want, I'm going to increase your faith. I want to increase your faith because you've been asking me for something and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I said, okay, Lord. And then he told me, he said, I need you to read the story of Hannah. Read the story of Hannah. Hannah's story is a little different from yours. Hannah was praying and asking me for a baby. You praying and asking me about, about this, about something. It's can't, you know, it's different, but Hannah has some crazy faith. She went to God and she prayed and asked God for a child. And God blessed her with a child. And then she gave it back to God. So he told me, I want you to read the story. So reading this story of Hannah has definitely, like, increased my faith. Like, having some crazy faith. Like, I'm prepping myself already. Like, okay, let me get prepared. Like, okay, look, Lord, you know. So you need to have some crazy faith. I want to encourage you to have some crazy faith on today to say, you know what? I've been praying and asking God, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to step out on faith. I'm going to be looking at some cars. I'm going to be looking at some houses. I'm expecting God to heal me. I'm going to have some crazy faith. Speak healing over your life. Speak healing. I am healed. Whatever it may be. No, I'm healed. I am healed. I got some crazy faith. My crazy faith is telling me that I am healed already. My crazy faith is telling me that I'm healed already. My crazy faith is telling me that I'm delivered already. My crazy faith is telling me that the house is mine already. My crazy faith is telling me that I get I got the business is mine already. It is mine already. So have some crazy bold faith on today. Um I pray that um I pray that this new this new begin this Bible study on Hannah tears turns into an answer prayer. I pray that um, it blessed you on today. I pray that you get some out of it. Share this video. Share this video with a loved one that you know they might be going through something. Share this video with someone they might be you know they might be um you might be in agreement with them. You might be in a prayer agreement with them. When you know both of y'all been praying together, just starting to share this video with them. You know. To bless them, you know, because this really, as I was studying, studying this last night, and I was reading this, and I had my taking my notes, I was like, this is good. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, this is good. I'm like, this is good. And then as he began to speak it in my spirit, like, get ready. Tell the people to get ready. Tell them to get ready because I'm getting ready to turn their tears into a answered prayer. I am getting ready to turn their tears into an answer prayer. So many of them have been crying. They've been praying and crying and asking me to do this for them. Some of them getting discouraged. Some of them losing hope. But give them this word on say, tell them, I'm getting ready to turn their tears into an answer prayer. And then share your testimony. Share your what I Tell them what I did for you. Tell them what I did for you and how long you had you waited. How long you was waiting. And did I not do it? And then I want to say, not only that, I want to go back to, for those of you who don't you ain't know, um, I was working at a school. And I'm going to share this with y'all in the end of the video. I was working at a school, and I was a health aide, health aide school nurse. I was there three years. Before I got that job, before I got that job, I was out of a job since, let me see, 20, because I think I got it into, yeah, I was out of a job for like, I believe, 
so 2019 I started school I was going to school uh, to become a, I became a health medical assistant so that was 2019 so I was in school 2019 to 2020 so I was out of a job for like six years six years six years I was looking actively looking for a job pending applications why you know why I was in school and God answered my prayer in 2021 I had now hear me real good because what how he did it God waited until I finished school he waited until I finished school waited until I graduated got my medical assistant medical assistant diploma he waited until I finished school then he opened the door for me a job so he waited he wanted me to finish school just like Hannah yearly yearly Hannah womb was shut up but God knew what he was doing he had a purpose and a plan for Hannah he shut up her womb because he knew exactly what he was doing like not yet not yet okay now I'm going to open up her womb now I'm going to open up her womb and then that's why I want you to read chapter two you read chapter two because after I got done reading this I read chapter two not only when Hannah gave when Hannah gave her only one son to the priest guess what God did it's in chapter two God bless Hannah God bless Hannah with five more children five more children yes five more children he blessed her with three boys and two girls read chapter two you read we just did chapter one it was so good chapter one was so good that I had to read chapter two when I read chapter two I was like whoa I was like man he gave her double God gave Hannah double double for her trouble double for her pain double for all that um, Panaya was teasing at time. He gave her double for that. He gave her double. So, oh, okay. She gave me her first. She gave me her first only son. I'm going to really bless her. I'm going to hook her up real good. God grant, bless her with five more children. So she had three boys and then she had two girls and Samuel. So she had six. Six kids. God blessed her with six kids. So, um, I just want to um, share it with you all as I was sitting here. I was like, wait a minute, chapter two. Let me tell y'all about chapter two. Give y'all a glimpse in the peak of chapter two. Go and read chapter two. So I pray that this is encouraging someone on today. For those of you who might be just like Hannah, your womb might even shut up. And you can't bear, you uh, you having problems conceiving a child. And to know like just like Hannah, like God, he hears your cry. He's about to turn. God is about to turn your tears into an answer prayer. He grants six kids. Six kids. So you might have been asking God for a child, one child. You never know. God might be, hey, he might be multiple, give you more, give you more than you can, you know, than you've been asking him for. So um, I pray that this blesses you. Um, this blessed you because this really blessed me. This lesson really blessed me on today um, and gave me encouragement to know, like, God is about to turn. God is about to turn my tears into an answer prayer. So that's all I have for now. I pray that you all was blessed. Until next time, it's your girl, Melissa. God bless.